Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the West Cliff Climb. I am here with the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Paul Looney. How are you, buddy? Good morning, Josh. I'm doing great. Great to see your beautiful face this morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good, sir. Well, let's just dive right into the deep end of the pool here with your video. I thought it was fantastic. Beautiful reminder. My goodness, especially this time of year, especially within the world that we're all living with and all the things flying at us. Talk to us all about the heart, the mind, the intent behind your video this morning. Fire away. Well, Josh, um, the church has a long history of spiritual direction. And we know that for all of us, that uh, we need someone on the sidelines who can help us to see what we cannot see. Yeah. And so for all of us, there's a need to be, hang on just a second. No, sorry. Oh, sorry. My, it turns out my vehicle was running and my wife had to <laughs> ask me if it was supposed to be. So, um, so all of us need someone to be intentional with us about seeing what we cannot see about, um, learning into, um, to get a bigger, broader perspective and more depth in what we see. And, and I think that uh, many people, even in their churches, um, do not have someone that they meet with regularly to give them that um, coaching, spiritual direction, um, or counseling that we, I think we all benefit from. And so the, the video makes the point that it's very helpful to have someone in your life that potentially you're paying to meet with you so they are fully focused on what's happening in you and around you, helping you to shine a light on the path so that you can figure out the next steps you want to take. Um, yeah. Certainly, our friends can do that for us. Certainly, we can um, have people that are um, that are able to to do that, but without um, without a clear uh, commitment to blessing them by paying them, sometimes they can get into uh, a mode where they're not as helpful as they might otherwise be. Um, I do think that um, one of the great things about where we are in history is that we have a lot of brain science um, that helps to affirm what we've learned from scripture and, and to give us strategies for dealing with trauma and mm. uh, difficult relationships and, and the polarization that we see in society right now. And, and I think a good counselor that's well-trained um, can really help you in those areas. Wow. Talk to us about what you would say are the pitfalls of a person not purposefully and intentionally engaging in a counselor type relationship. What do you see? If it's all peer related, it's all family related. What do you see are the, the potential roadblocks we could run into? Sure. Well, the biggest one for me, Josh, is that I know that in my most intense and invested relationships, that my my coping strategies, my coping style, my personality um, can be activated whenever I feel threat, I go into survival mode. Hmm. And most of that stems from early childhood experiences when I learned to... Um, to deal with threat in relationship in particular ways. I learned to shut down and withdraw or right. to cling um, right. or to please or to push back. And so the counselor can help you identify what those coping strategies are and actually help you be curious, like where did that get established? When did I first feel the threat of abandonment hmm. or neglect? When did I first feel that I had to push against authority? Where did my issues with trust come in? Because, you know, uh, the scripture talks about putting the ax to the root right. and a counselor can help you get to the root of the things that are now bearing fruit in your life wow. and help you really kind of cut to the chase, so to speak, or cut to the core of the issue and, and figure out like, okay, how can I put an end to that? Jesus wants us to be available to be moved by the spirit and not moved by our survival drives. And so what, what I like to think is that our, our emotional defenses are God given um, to protect us when we're small, but eventually you have to abandon them. And that is tough. Well, so let me, let me ask you, I mean, I mean, you already kind of 
kind of hit this point on, from one angle here. What would you say, rough estimate, what percentage of the quirks, the maybe the issues, the challenges that we deal with, would you say stems from childhood stuff, experiences? What percentage? Well, you had to... well it's it's really hard to, to uh, quantify in that way. When we're when we're doing well, when we're in our element, we're at work, we feel in control. We're able to be um, to show up in ways that are appropriate to the situation. Our reactions, wow. our responses okay. tend to be measured and logical and reasonable because we're grown ups, right? We're right. mature people. Right. But put me in a situation where I get triggered. Um, by disrespect or mm. by pushback or um, or by a threat of abandonment or whatever. And then I become that two-year-old or five-year-old or eight-year-old that feels like he's been drug into the principal's office or yeah. feels like she's at risk of being um, molested. Um, right. And th in, in those moments, we're totally at the mercy of our um, of our defenses. Um, there's a guy named Dan Siegel who's a neuroscientist. He's a psychiatrist like me. And um, he says that he uses the hand as a model of the brain. And he says that our thumb is representative of the limbic system, which is where our emotion and, and memory and trauma are housed. And that, it, it turns out, is deep, in the, deep inside of our brain. And that the core, that the around that limbic system, which is at the core, is the rational part of our brain. If this is the right, if these are the two hemispheres of my brain. Right, right. The, the knuckles, um, the, the gray matter is reasonable and rational. It makes good decisions and thinks about the future and makes plans. But if I get triggered in the limbic system, that the core of my brain, particularly the amygdala, which gets triggered by fear, then my brain can get hijacked. I can actually kind of like flip my lid so that the, the rational part of me goes offline and I'm at the mercy of the emotional self. And I do and say stupid things. <laughs> um, it's, it's incredible. Wow. You know, I, I'm just taking real for a second here, applying what you just said to like, let's say my family. I, I come from two very large groups of people on both sides of my family. And I don't think I'm about to throw them under the bus. Heck, most of them don't watch this anyway. So it'll, it'll be okay. Uh, you know, here it is. Like what I think about, like when I apply your, your wisdom of your video is I notice that a lot of times, at least if I look at my own major tribes, two big tribes, they were apt to either sweep things under the rug. They're not as, they're nowhere near as bad as it was. Really? Are you, are you, are you sure about that? Or uh, we make it the worst thing ever because there's guilt and shame from the matriarch or the patriarch and, that one mistake is going to define you for the rest of your life. And now you're a head case from it. So it's like, I can totally see number one, just from that standpoint, um, that aspect, the other thing that you're speaking to that I am like, especially with the holidays, like I'm being reminded of how spot it spot on. I notice I can go to family members houses and they're, they're the most incredible host. They're incredible. But if everyone comes back to the town, back to that house, back to the group it's like like you said like everyone reverts back to their role in the family right this this person is supposed to be the spoiled little brat yeah but they're 52 no nope, they're still seven now right <laughs> and this is the know-it-all in the family it's the oldest who tells everyone else what to do it's it's like everyone goes right back into their spot and it's so when i think about the necessity of the role in the ministry of someone like yourself is you really, if you don't get outside that and get intentional, you are you run the risk. I'm not saying it's everybody all the time, but you can run the risk of being at the mercy of all those dynamics. What's yeah. your reaction thought to that? Oh, I of course, I agree with you. Um, I think that we, not, we can't see what we don't see. Um, hmm. uh, it, it takes somebody else to tell me what my backside looks like. <laughs> and I... <I'm, laughs> I and what I it smells butt. like too. Yeah, there exactly, it is. Exactly. Exactly. So I know I have a butt. However, someone else can see my <laughs> butt way better than I do. And that's where, um, that's where I, I, we need someone who has our back in the best possible way. Who can, who can tell us what our butt crack looks like without being demeaning or, you know, uh, critical, 
but who can help us to see how to 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 change in a way that really uh, blesses us. Your video talks about repentance and really a good counselor fosters what the Bible calls repentance. The Greek word mm. metanoia means to change your way of thinking about something, to give you that shift in perspective that allows you to approach a problem, yeah. um, a personality in a, in a fresh way. Yeah. And so that's that's really what we're hoping for is that we 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 talked a few weeks ago about go about 3D conversations that that we're able to incorporate a perspective that on the surface is novel and fresh and maybe sometimes troubling like wait uh, what are you saying yeah but because the person who's looking in on my situation I talked about mice in the maze the person who's looking down from above sees things that I'm blind to and I'm like what and, yeah. uh, and yet, if I'm curious and open, then I'm like, oh, my gosh. And sometimes when I'll, I'll make a, a suggestion to someone and their immediate response is, oh, no, no, that's not that's not it at all. But they may come back the next week and say, you know what? I think you're right. Hmm. I think it is about my mother or I think it is about my brother. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, whether it's pride or prejudice, whether it's fear or or. Uh, arrogance. We all need someone to say, mm, yeah, here's what it looks like from over here. Um, yeah. But someone who's respectful enough to let you be the final authority on you. Yeah. Cause almost no family's going to go, well, Bill, here's the reason you're this way. I messed you up. You know, like nobody's gonna, that rarely is ever going to happen in a family. Like it's on me. You can, it's with me and your mother. We did this to you, you know? Um, so I just think that's fascinating. The other thing is maybe for our listeners to to take this to heart too. You know, even as a pastor, I I have to know within myself when there's a moment in my ministry to refer what I do or refer that individual to someone who specializes in in the kind of field that you specialize in. And uh, I know even in my my time here as a pastor, one of the things I try to make so normalized is the idea of counseling. I mean, what you mentioned, Hidden Mana Ministries, you know, what you guys do for marriage counseling or what you do for building up marriages. I mean, that's that's even something that myself and, and Mallory are really looking forward to the next opportunity to engage with Hidden Mana. Um, I think that kind of stuff and knowing when, like, this is out of my pay grade. I now need to go, I need to, and I, I've had a number of times, as you know, where between yourself and some others, where you have to know when to push that person now in another direction. And then in the course of doing it, I'm happy to tell them, you know, I've been to counseling, you know, I've, in your case, I've, I've met with Dr. Looney. I was so blessed by it. This is a win. It'll be a win for you. And I try to encourage them by pointing to my own experiences first, but that we, I think we all have to know that line of when to now kind of push to someone well, exactly. like yourself. And, and sometimes it's not even a matter of your expertise because you may be fully equipped to deal with a person's issues or struggles, but because you're their pastor, there's a dynamic that could cause trouble. And that is that they want to be seen in a certain light by you. They want to mm. please you. They want to, you to think that they're a good Christian. And so they may hold back with you simply because they fear rejection by you sure, or judgment sure. by you. And so, so for them to be with someone who's not their pastor, who's yeah. just, they're paying to listen to them. There, it, there's a, there's a, a possibility that they would be much more forthcoming about their issues, especially if they're having some issue with you because they projected onto you their issues with dad or authority. Cause sure. trust me, they will, right. <laughs> you know, right. they're, if you're their pastor you're going to be the target of their issues with dad, maybe mom, maybe authority. And so with, with a counselor, they have an opportunity, hopefully, to engage with them in a way that's authentic enough that they can, they can actually get to some resolution. I love it. I love it. Okay, so I'm putting you on the spot here just momentarily for our average person out there listening. And, uh, you know, they have a friend that, that brings something to their, their attention that's going on in their life. What it, do you do you have any guidance for the average person as to what would be the checklist to go? Okay, I've heard this, 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 and this out of my friend. 
I at this point need to encourage them to go see counseling. What 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 would be some of the telltale signs you would suggest? Well, of course, if you, if you see someone is struggling with serious depression or anxiety, panic attacks, or the possibility of some kind of physiological condition that is that is giving them trouble, of course you want to encourage them to see their doctor or a counselor or talk to their pastor. Um, if they're dealing with deep and troubling um, spiritual issues, if they're if they're having existential crisis where they're yeah. struggling about the meaning of life, or especially if they're con- contemplating suicide or at risk of harming someone, you have an obligation to get them to take an action that will make them and others safe. Um, but but you know my bias, Josh, is that um, even if they're talking to you and they don't clearly have a necessity for a, a counselor, it's always, I think, helpful to, to encourage people who are in a transition point. Maybe they're not suicidal, but they're just trying to decide whether to change jobs or mm. um, dealing with some substantial issues in, in their marriage or parenting. Um, it's, I think it's always good to say, hey, have you, ta- have you thought about talking to a counselor about this just to get a fresh perspective? And they, they may come back after seeing the counselor and they say, yeah, the counselor told me exactly what you told me. Like, oh, well, that's good. Sometimes yeah. we need to hear the same information for someone who we know is not just saying what we think they you know, have to say because they're our friend or whatever. Right. Um, the Bible says by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. And so if I'm in a relationship, let's say you and I, uh, get you know crossways about Westcliff and about the direction of the ministry. Um, if it's just you know Josh and Paul, we could we could easily get into a power struggle. But if we sit down with a third person and share each one our perspective, that third yeah. person may look at me and go, Paul, here's what I'm here's what I'm seeing, and he may re reaffirm in a, in a maybe a slightly different form what I've yeah. been hearing from you. And when I hear from that other person, I go like, oh, okay, I guess you're right, Josh. And, and it hits me in a different way once I hear it confirmed from another source. So that the, the power of counseling can be substantial, especially when you get at loggerheads or get to a stuck point in a relationship. Wow, I think that's that's spot on. So then uh, let me just ask before we transition. Of course, we always have hiddenmana.org on the ticker tape below. Is there any, uh, anything coming up with hidden mana, any, uh, opportunities? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. In? We're, we're getting ready to, uh, in partnership with Woodlands church, we're going to be getting, uh, close to 2000 gift bags ready to go to prisoners that, uh, inmates at the walls unit in Huntsville and at the Henley state and plain state jails, um, over by Dayton. And so, um, we had, we did a, uh, Tuesday, um, uh, the Giving Tuesday uh, donation and, and raise some money that way. But if, if you want to partner with us in that, go to hiddenmana.org and give us a donation, or you can do it through Woodlands Church. Right on, right on. Well, we do appreciate Hidden Mana as well for uh, continued support of Westcliff. And so let's transition to the other video. Uh, and I want to point out real quick before we go into – into my uh, the slow drift. Uh, I just want to give Dave Caceres out there on the internet uh, an amazing, amazing shout out for what that guy did. Wow, fantastic job! You know, we recorded that quite a while ago. I forgot how good it was, and I'm glad, glad that we had the opportunity to be reminded how good it was. Dave Caceres is the uh, uh, worship leader here at Pilgrim, and of course, he's a Berkeley School of Music guy. He's just an unbelievably talented. And you know, this is the thing about a guy like that. I know people that are talented and I know people that are humble. Uh, and I know people that are humble and they stink at what they do. And I know people who are talented and know that they're talented. And really both types of people will blow up a music ministry. Uh, Dave is one of those rare birds that is so talented and so humble. It's such a joy to work with him. And so I loved his rendition. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What child is this? What a beautiful reminder that um, when Jesus appeared, um, he appeared in a form that was unexpected. And yeah. I think just that curiosity, like, what is this? 
um, yeah. that God has provided for us at this moment in time. And, and for this time of, of the year, just looking at the baby Jesus and with fresh eyes is a great challenge and, um, and opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the slow drift, uh, was really just, uh, birthed out of very real experiences of, for some reason, every time I ever went to the beach with my buddies, with my, uh, with my cousins, we would get out there probably deeper than we should have been. I, I don't know why we were, you know, my, I don't know if it's just a generational thing. My parents would let me go out into the ocean in a level. I will never let my kids. <laughs> don't know what that was it's a whole different era uh so i probably went out like you know second sandbar and stuff and we were out there deep for being little people uh and uh you know maybe anywhere between you know nine and 13 throughout those teenage early teenage years and i'm telling you without fail we would be out there for an hour or so and i would look to the shore and i'm telling you it would just be panic you didn't you didn't realize that you were moving down the coast just didn't know it they didn't ever seem to be very panicked either. And maybe that's the part of the teaching I left out. They could always see me. They always yeah. had their eyes on me, you know? And so sure. it drift on down and then it panic and then, oh no. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, weigh in. Well, I, you know, I, for, of course, for me, one of the first things I think about is how when we, sometimes we look to God after a break and we, we think, where, where did he go? Yeah. And without realizing that we have allowed ourselves to be in that slow drift. And I think that your video does a good job of showing how, for instance, King David, who who did have a heart for God at a particular point in time, um, allowed himself to drift. But we, we, we often do, I think, wonder where God is. And um, it has to do with our distraction and the forces that are at work to, to take us away from him. You mentioned the, the tide and the, the currents. And you know, you're just your own um, focus on your plate. We all get we all get our focus off of off of the shoreline, yeah. and um, we we do engage that drift. But I just, I think it's it is it's kind of comical in your your uh, video that you know you look up <laughs> and you think where did they go? You know, like where did they, they go? They didn't go anywhere. I'm the one who left. You know, that's how it yeah. works. And I'm having so much fun, and then I'm terrified. And I just, you know, I have sat down with couples before where they're like, hey, you know, we're getting a divorce. It's not working out or whatever. And and I'll sit down and have a conversation. You'll find out there was nothing. Shout out to Kobe Nichols. We love you, buddy. Thank you for listening. Um, there, there was no major nuke. And what you hear them describe is 25 years of little steps, little steps steps and now what were just little rocks and little pebbles 25 years later it's a mountain and they drifted and are now doing something that i'm sure when they stood at the altar we're never like you know i think i'm gonna go ahead and get a divorce in 25 years and start my life over no one planned on doing that we all end up doing things sometimes that we can't imagine we would ever do and i thought man king david such a, a player and i want to say this this is maybe this show should just be called today shout out Shout out to Pam and Terry, who gave me a, a, just some thoughts to remind, remind us all. Even David had a great counselor in Nathan. Mm, mm. You know? Yeah. Someone who spoke truth. Here's the deal, yeah. man. You are, yeah. you are an affront right now to God's will and design for your life. And it's interesting. When his own son uh, was going to try to overtake his father, David, it's Ahithophel. In 2 Samuel 15, 12, who was David's chief counselor. And so oh, I think wow. there is this there is yeah. this connection between our two videos that yeah, yeah. godly men, not even godly men, when left to their own devices, should be left to their own devices. That's how yeah. the drift happens. And so yeah. even to be reminded that these great heroes of scripture, when they are at their best, their absolute best, they have a truth teller around them who has nothing else invested other than the truth because no one yeah. else will tell the guy wow. the thing yeah. that he needs to hear. Uh, and so that may, that may also be a beautiful connection there that exists between our two videos is the need yeah, for a I counselor and the yeah. slow drift. How do you prevent the slow drift? Sometimes it's quite literally that person that you bring into your world that tells you the truth. Yeah. Wow. Who can see where you're headed. 
I love that. You know, one of the things that just hit me as you're talking about Nathan is that the strategy that Nathan uses is a strategy that we now know reaches a part of the brain that lecturing and preaching does not. And what he uses when he comes to Jesus and when he comes to David is an analogy or an allegory. He tells about a man who has a lot of sheep who, who takes his neighbor's one sheep to slaughter to feed his own company. And David is outraged by this story. Um, and it's a story that's, that's, uh, that's far enough removed from David's immediate experience that he can, he can see it for what it is. This is horrible. Right. And then Nathan turns around and says, well, that's you. You're the man. Um, because David's like, this guy deserves to die. Right. And Nathan's like, yep. And so do you. And, and one of the beautiful things about the story to me is that even, even though we think of the Old Testament in terms of law and um, judgment, um, that even in the Old Testament, though, though David had, had um, violated two of the big ten yeah. um, in committing adultery and killing Uriah, um, God's intention in sending Nathan was not to render judgment mm. as much as it was to get David to a place where he could experience mercy. Yeah. But that's, that's where the repentance came in. And that's why I think that the video is so powerful because it, it shows that that slow drift can take us far from grace, take us far from the presence of God and those that love us. But if we're willing that, that, that call of repentance can bring us back to grace can in an instantaneously give us that, shift in perspective that brings us to our knees and brings us back to God. I love that. And, you know, that's, again, another connection between our two videos is, you know, David would write, you know, how sweet, like, the taste of God's law is, how he loved God's law. And, and sometimes yeah. I think what we miss, we we just refer to all, everything as commandments. But, you know, it's really also like instruction in the Hebrew. It's meant like his instruction. And I think about what someone like you offers is quite literally like here's the best way to live and exist mm -hmm. now you want to you want to go take off a thousand yards down the shore there's consequences for that there is you want to go live this way there's consequences for that and, and someone that i love in in your particular practice you infuse scripture paul like just beautifully into your practice which i think is also brings the scriptures to life and i love that and so I just think that's the other thing to remind people, like, like God's instruction is good. It's the best way to live. It's the best way to exist. It's the best way to love and exist with one another in our families, our relationships, our marriages, um, as, as people, um, you know, living, living out this life in, in, in our culture. And so I think that's the other connection there is this is a good thing. It's a good way to I live. Too. And it's good yeah. to have people breathing that truth and insight into yeah. your life. Exactly. Well, you know, I, th I think, Josh, right in line with what you're saying is that that while Nathan spoke the word of truth, it was the Holy Spirit within David that um, brought him to the place of conviction where he was able to say yes to that truth. Um, Jesus declared that it's good for you if I go because another counselor will come, that, that counselor who is also our comfort. And yeah. so even in my practice, even though I'm a counselor, um, Jesus is still the wonderful counselor. He's the Prince of Peace. And, and the Holy Spirit within us is what brings conviction of sin and leads us to repentance, which leads to life. Man, there it is. Life and life to the full as Jesus has intended it for us. I want to just uh, wrap things up here, guys, by thanking again Woodlands Church. We appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Hidden Manna ministries uh doing such important work as you even heard earlier in our time together and we'll keep you guys uh in the loop as to uh what hidden mana has coming up next uh as offerings to you all um to offer truth and life uh into your lives into your marriages of course uh church of the king and tavarius linzer thank you guys for your continued support dave caceres fantastic job brother worship leader at my church, Pilgrim Lutheran Church, speaking of which, love you guys and thank you for the continued support to be able to uh, make something like this happen. I would love at this time to take off my headset, 
expose my bald head and lead us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for your incredible love and kindness and grace and mercy towards each and every one of us. Lord, it is your desire that we would have life and life to the full. You have an instruction and design of what that looks like. And so often, because of so many reasons, we can find ourselves drifting down the coast, lost, confused, disoriented as to what is the next step for our lives. And we thank you, God, for appointing godly men and women set aside to speak the truth, to speak the truth in love um, and in a truly unique way. And so, Lord, for those that are listening that need, uh, whether they're in a transition time, whether they're in a, in a rough patch, a rough season, Lord, that they would most certainly reach out and take those critical steps towards mental, emotional, spiritual, and relational health. God, we thank you for the power and the conviction of your beautiful Holy Spirit in repentance, that in a moment, even if we've drifted for years and years and years, in a moment, because of the beautiful sacrifice of your son, Jesus, how much we love you, that you make that moment, no matter how far we've drifted, no matter how far we've gone, in an instant, we're right back with you by your grace, your mercy, and your love. We love you so much. It's in your name. Amen. 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 We love you guys. We will be back here same time, same place. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye.